Welcome to the 340B program for Critical Access Hospitals. This webinar is sponsored by the Wisconsin Office of Rural Health. We are going to talk about how the 340B program is set up for Critical Access Hospitals. This program is a federal program and it requires drug manufacturers to offer drugs to covered entities at or below the statutory defined ceiling price. This program enables covered entities to stretch those scarce federal resources as far as possible. It allows you to take the savings to reach more eligible patients and provide more comprehensive services. As a critical access hospital, you are eligible to be enrolled in the 340B drug program. It is able to be used for outp reimbursable outpatient departments. These are departments that are on your cost report and being cost reimbursed. It is also able to be used for provider-based rural health clinics. Any cost report line between the lines of 50 and 101 are able to use these 340B drugs. Who are the patients that are eligible? It is only for outpatients, not for someone in an inpatient stay. You have to maintain the patient record and you have to be responsible for the care of that patient. The drugs have to be prescribed by an eligible provider. These eligible providers are any providers that are employed by your entity or under a contract to cover to do services at your entity. You must be billing for those services. So just having a contract to have a specialist come in and they do their own billing does not make for an eligible provider. They have to be under contract that you will be doing the billing. The other types of providers that are eligible are providers that you refer your patients to. Remember, I said you must maintain that patient record. So in a referral situation, it would be in the medical record that you were referring your patient to a specialist. That specialist would see the patient, prescribe drugs, and they would also take all of those notes from that visit, including the prescription note and send it back to your facility and it would become part of your medical record. The next time your provider sees that patient, they know that they're receiving those drugs from the specialist and they can then ask about them. How does the three, I mean, this sounds like a great idea. How does the 340B work? Well, for one thing, you, you would set up a special purchasing with whomever it is that you're purchasing your drug, your wholesaler now, maybe Cardinal, maybe McKesson, maybe someone else. And you would then order for the 340B program through this account and you would be ordering these drugs at usually between 25 and 50% less than what you are paying for them now. You would bill the patient's insurance in the usual way, the standard rate that you are billing right now, and that 340B saving would be retained by your facility. That savings then is used to expand your services. Um, some drugs cannot be billed. So to be reimbursed for those, it's simply you're purchasing them at a lower cost. So therefore the cost of your drugs are much lower, but yet you, you would just be flowing that through your pharmacy department. One of the big things is under the 340B program, there is a lot of compliance. One of the major pieces in this compliance is having policies and procedures that are specific to the 340B program. Another thing that you can do is you can contract with a retail pharmacy. Normally, we recommend that you look at where do the majority of your patients go for their prescription? Is it the local Walmart store? If it is, that would be the place that you would want to contract with. This can be a significant additional revenue for your entity because what happens is the patient goes to the pharmacy, they get their prescription. So even myself, as a commercial insurance, I would go to Walmart, I would pick up my 
prescription. They would bill my insurance. I would pay my copay. Now, through the contract that you have with this retail pharmacy, they would have the drugs reimbursed to them. So if you um, say that I picked up a sinus medication and I picked up 100 pills, those 100 pills, they would then be able to order and you would be billed through your account, the 340B account, okay? So now they've dispensed these drugs, they've received new dr the same drug and replacement, they also get a dispensing fee. So it should be a win-win situation anytime that you are working with a contracted retail pharmacy. There's not a lot of overhead that is required to work with the 340B program. It's not significant in investments, in personnel or equipment or infrastructure. The biggest thing is the training. You, you must be compliant, whether it be a contract pharmacy or whether it be even just internally. You need to be compliant with the program. What are some of the compliance risks? Um, you know, there's compliance risks, and there's overlooked opportunities. You know, we've talked to, I'll be talking about a little bit about those compliance risks in the questions to be asked. But the overlooked opportunities are also a huge um, revenue generating for the entity. The direct purchases. Oftentimes in the clinic, um, they may be purchasing drugs such as birth control or something like that that is specific to a patient. Those may not be coming through the hospital pharmacy, but they are eligible for the 340B drug program because that provider-based clinic is part of your entity. Non-pharmacy purchases um, and non-pharmacy charge codes are a huge thing. You know, you may be using drugs in surgery or radiology. And once again, those departments may be ordering them directly and not through the pharmacy. Or maybe you're not thinking about them being 340B eligible. Any drugs that are used on an outpatient are eligible for, three, for, for the 340B discount. The other one is those referral prescriptions. As I said, those can be 340B eligible as long as you have kept all of the records and you're watching the compliance procedures that are involved with that. Here are some of the compliance things and some of the th questions that you should be act asking. Who is overseeing your 340B program? Is it your pharmacist or is it someone else within your organization? What procedures are being used to be, make sure that you're complying with all of the regulations? The pharmacist may say, oh, I know everything that, you know, the 340B program needs. However, are you also um, putting into those policies and procedures how much you are saving from that 340B program? Do you know how much you're saving from the 340B program? And do you know what those dollars are being used for? One of the things that we've found, oftentimes the policies and procedures are not in place. And if they are in place, they're not being followed. That is a huge thing when HRSA comes through your door to do the audit. Do you have a, an external compliance review? Oftentimes we're seeing that these third-party vendors these days will say, we do audits. We audit our things continuously. They are auditing their own records. You want to make sure that you have some outside eyes looking at your program. One of the biggest things too is that your 340B program should be profitable. If it's not profitable, you need to question why and you need to look into that. And it's possible that some of your contracts just need to be renegotiated. Um, another thing that we're seeing a lot of right now is if you bill Medicaid patients, are you following your state regulations? for that. A lot of times you must submit those on a bill that has a modifier with it or or also a dispensing fee. And if you are not doing that, this can be a compliance problem. If you do have any questions about the 340B drug program, my name, my phone number, and my email address are listed here. Please feel free to reach out to me 
or get in contact with the Wisconsin Office of Rural Health and we will get you all of the information that you need. Thank you for attending this webinar.